So welcome to Drupal NYC. So we'll start with um, some quick announcements. Uh, we request that people have their cameras on if you, you feel comfortable with that and mute yourself when you're not speaking. Please use the Slack channel to chat because that will last after the meeting. So if you want to share some links or just comment, the Slack channel is a place to be. Um, we will tonight uh, have a very quick job fair. So if you've got a, uh, if you're looking for work or you've got a job available, um, please let us know. We'll have a talk by Aaron and then we'll have a time where we can solve some problems and then we can just hang out and chat. And thank you to our organizers. Um, Holing is um, with us. And um, we've, we've also got others who work behind the, the scenes. If you'd like to connect with us, we've got Twitter and, of course, Slack. And please support the Drupal Association. Um, it's a great way to give back to the community. And um, for, for many years, the community, the association has been helping push Drupal forward. And that not, not only helps us with our own particular jobs, but uh, pushing Drupal forward means that it's a better, um, it creates a space where all of us can have a platform. That's, that's fantastic. Upcoming events. Uh, GovCon and of course Drupal Camp NYC coming up very soon. And if you'd like to help in the organization, um, please let us know. We are always looking for new people to help us out in organizing the camp. And also, I'll mention later with if you'd like to give a talk, um, please let us know. So Drupal NYC also have a lunch and learn where this is just a convenient way during work hours to be able to meet other people. We meet exactly for one hour. So if it's perfectly in your, in your lunchtime. And if you're interested in speaking, thank you for connecting with us, Aaron and Leora uh, and Ralph as well. So um, look forward to hearing you guys speak soon. And so is, Anyone hiring or looking for work? Um, not a Drupal position, but if you would like to work for my boss, uh, we are hiring a manager for uh, Windows services. So we would like to have somebody who has managerial experience and migration uh, to M365. Cool. Thank you, Holly. Great, and so it's time for our presentation by Aaron. So thank you very much, Aaron. I'll hand that over to you. And you have access to be able to share your slides. And please start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, let's give this a try. I'm going to be doing this on my iPad, so that's what's gonna be fun. All right, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Awesome, all right, it's working. So um, my presentation today is about three ways to add functionality to a Drupal website. Um, my apologies if some of this is, is going to be a little bit basic, but hopefully there'll be uh, some more interesting stuff in there as well. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I've been a web designer and developer for about 20 plus years. Uh, I've been working with Drupal for a little over 10 years or, or roughly since of about when Drupal 6 was new. Um, I do mostly site design, site building, theming, although in the last few years, I've done a little bit of custom module development as well. Uh, for the last 10 years or so, I've been working in uh, Columbia University, uh, first down in Morningside, and now I work at the Health Sciences Library at the Columbia University Medical Center. Uh, 
Um, so this presentation is going to look at three ways to add functionality to a Drupal website, and I'm going to use a very specific example. Um, so several months back, uh, I wanted to add a feature to the website that I work on to display the article read time. So um, I don't know if this was big enough, but I just wanted to highlight this. Um, this is what I'm talking about. You might have seen something like this on other websites before, um, but it basically is just a really simple little addition to um, give users uh, a sense of how long an article is before they actually get into reading it um, so that they know what they're getting into. Um, and I actually went through the three different ways that I'm going to talk about when I started exploring how to add this to the website. Um, and when I was done, I thought about it and said, this would make for a really interesting presentation because this is kind of like a, a textbook example of, of different ways you can do this. Uh, and so that was the, the genesis of this presentation. Uh, so the three ways that, that I'm going to talk about are finding a contributor module, um, customizing the Drupal theme, uh, and then writing a custom module. So I'll start with contributed modules. Um, when I first did a search for contributed modules for read time, I came up with these two modules. Um, and I'll look at them in a minute. Um, but I just wanted to mention some of the some of the things to consider or that I considered in choosing a contributed module. Um, you know, what is the module status? Is there a is there a stable build of this module? Is it still sort of in development? Um, is the module being covered by security advisories? Uh, when was the module last updated? How many people are using the module? Um, how many open issues are there to be addressed? Uh, and related to that, how many patches are waiting to be applied to that module? Um, and so I wanted to just look at a couple examples of this. Um, this page that I brought up is for the paragraphs module. Uh, and this is a really interesting one because uh, if we look down here, obviously, there are a lot of websites using this module, uh, almost 200,000 report using this module. Um, so obviously it's being very heavily used, um, but they haven't updated this in a while. The last release is from May of last year. Uh, and there are 278 pending patches. So um, obviously there's a lot of work going on in this module. There are, are potentially a bunch of, um, a bunch of issues that people are working to resolve. Um, so it's obviously a really popular module, but one that um, still requires a bit of work. Um, by comparison, the first of the two read time modules that I looked at, um, this one's the read time module. This one reports only 205 sites using this. So either not very popular, uh, module or maybe a not very popular feature or people have found easier, faster ways to implement this. Um, also of note on here is the fact that um, while there's a stable release, uh, this module hasn't been updated in more than two years. So that's a slight concern. Um, by comparison, the node read time module, um, has a few more sites using it, um, a little over 700. So that's a bit better. Um, and this one's been updated recently, uh, July of this year. So uh, if I were you know, going to make a selection today about what module, contributed module I'd wanna use, I would probably pick this one because it's more recently updated uh, and more people appear to be using it. So I would assume that means that I may have some better luck with that. Um, so obviously there's some pros and cons about using contributed modules. Obviously contributed modules uh, are very easy ways to enhance your Drupal website if you can find the right one. Uh, and somebody else has already written the code for you so you don't have to worry about that. Um, 
but this is somebody else's solution to this problem. So uh, contributed module might not work exactly how you want it to work. Um, and for less frequently used modules, there can be questions about um, how well the module is being supported. So the second path uh, is by customizing the Drupal theme. Um, and so this approach uh, entails adding read time, the, the read time value to a Drupal template. Um, and so very basically a Drupal theme uses templates to display content. Um, the Drupal content is available to the template uh, as variables. Um, we can insert our own variables into the Drupal templates using pre-process functions. Um, and so it's possible to add read time to a template as a custom variable. Um, the calculation for read time is really simple. Uh, it's basically just the number of words, it's based on the number of words per minute that the average adult can read. Uh, it's usually somewhere between 180 to 250, depending on age, education, um, how easy or difficult the subject matter is. Um, and so just for the sake of what I'm doing here, uh, I'm assuming uh, 200 words per minute. And so read time can be calculated by uh, taking the number of words in the body field of our article and dividing it by 200. Very simple calculation. And so the theme customization that I'm looking at here is to take uh, the pre-process node function. Um, and the function will be very simple. It'll load the node that's being viewed, um, get the text of the body field of that node. We're assuming that there's, you know, this node isn't using paragraphs or different um, custom fields that have other content in them. This is just a very simple example. Um, we'll use the PHP function uh, string word count uh, to find out how many words are in that field, uh, do the read time calculation, uh, and then add read time as a variable to the node template. Uh, and so this function would go into the dot theme file for the theme. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. Uh, so the first two lines here, this is just the quick way of um, getting the current node um, by uh, getting the getting the node from the variables that are available to this function, grabbing the ID and then using that to load the node. Um, and then the next line here, we're just grabbing the body field from that node, um, getting the read time. So we're taking the, the body field, stripping out the HTML tags, doing the word count, uh, dividing that by 200 and then rounding up. And that's the read time. Uh, and then adding our custom variable read time uh, and assigning it the value we calculated. And then um, it's as simple as customizing the node template and adding in uh, our read time variable uh, wherever we want to in the, uh, in the HTML structure for this, uh, for the display of this node. Um, so this is relatively easy to do, uh, especially if you already have a custom theme you can just add to your .theme file the appropriate um, preprocess function to add the custom variable and then um, customize the appropriate template to add, um, add the read time variable to display. Um, and this is going to be you know, specifically tailored to your website. So it's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. Um, the drawbacks to this are obviously that there's no, 
there's nothing in the Drupal UI that you can do to, to manage how read time is being displayed. So if you want even minor changes to how this is going to work on your website, you actually have to go and do code updates, which may or may not be easy depending on sort of your build processes and your, um, uh, your deployment schemes. So the final approach that I'm gonna look at here is using a custom module. Um, and uh, the final for me, there are obviously other ways that you can implement this solution. Um, I also considered using a calculated field um, for the nodes that I was uh, looking to add this to. Um, so there are certainly other ways to do this, but this is the, the last one that I'm gonna look at. Um, and this is the Drupal way. So making uh, building a custom module is obviously the official way to add custom functionality to Drupal. You're using the APIs uh, from Drupal. Uh, obviously you need to know PHP and slightly more difficult than that, be able to understand the Drupal documentation. Um, but this is how every contributed module starts. You know, somebody built a custom module for their site um, and eventually it became mature enough that they um, shared it with the community. Um, so the way that I uh, approached this was I learned about something called pseudo fields. Um, so pseudo fields are a special type of field uh, that you can add to any content entity type. Um, this is different from a, a regular field where the value is stored in the database. So a pseudo field is you basically do some sort of generated or calculated value um, and you make that available as a field in your entity. Um, and here are some links uh, that I used as reference for learning about um, creating some pseudo fields in Drupal. At its core, a custom module to do this has three functions. Um, obviously, it can get more complicated and fancy, but to get the essential functionality that I'm looking for here, there's just three functions that are necessary. Um, the first function is hook entity extra field info. So this is the, the function that will be used in the custom module to define the pseudo field that's being added. So the name, the, the machine name, the, 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 um, the name that appears in the Drupal UI uh, and a description um, of that pseudo field. The second function is hook no view. So this is the function that will actually add the pseudo field to, the, uh, to a node. So essentially um, this, uh, one of these hook, uh, hook entity view functions will alter the, the build array uh, of the entity that you're trying to modify before it gets rendered. And so that's when the, the pseudo field gets added. Uh, and then the last function is hook theme, and this is for registering the, the template that is being used to theme the uh, pseudo field itself. Um, and then the result of building out this custom module is that you actually get um, a read time field in your configuration of uh, in the configuration of your content type. And it's there just like any of the other uh, regular Drupal fields. And so you can move it around, you can enable it or disable it. Um, you know, obviously the, the benefit here is it, you treat it like any of the other um, fields in your content type and you can manage its display. Um, so obviously this has some some real benefits. Um, it's treated like any other content type, uh, content type field in the admin UI. Uh, it can be themed. So obviously, you know, I put in a, a template for theming the field in the custom module, but that could be overridden by a site theme. Um, but obviously this is the most difficult to implement um, and it requires being able to, to write PHP and the ability to to have access to the site to, to make these modifications, which, you know, depending on the kind of site that you have or the kind of access you have, um, 
you know, not everybody has that those permissions. Um, so obviously, like I said, uh, I I was looking at a very bare bones implementation of a custom module for for read time. So there are lots of things that that could be added to a custom module for read time. Um, there could be a configuration form to customize the read time calculation. So perhaps you want to um, tweak the, the value for um, number of words per minute that you're assuming a person can read. Um, it would be nice to have some sort of configuration um, form where you could set that value instead of having to set it in code. Um, Another nice configuration option would be to select the content types on which you want to add the read time field. Um, in my example, I'm just adding it to everything, um, but you obviously you might want to say, all right, I only want it on certain content types. Um, another configuration option that would be helpful is um, identifying which fields to use in the calculation of read time. So maybe you have a custom content type that doesn't have a body field. Maybe it has some other field where the content of that node is stored and you want to identify that field instead um, for the calculation. Or perhaps you're using paragraphs or perhaps you have multiple fields which need to be uh, from which the word count needs to be uh, collectively calculated. Um, and then obviously, you know, once the custom module is built up, um, it could be um, written in a way that's a bit more generic and distributed as a contributed module. Um, so what did I choose? Uh, I thought this was interesting to look at. So um, I actually have two websites that I'm running. Uh, I have a Drupal 8 website for the um, Medical Center Library uh, and a Drupal 9 website for the library's archives and special collections. Um, for the library website, I actually wrote um, the custom module. Um, and so this is the very simple uh, setup for my custom module. Um, obviously I have an info file. Um, here is the module file with the uh, implementation of hook entity extra field info, uh, hook entity type view, and the hook theme. Um, and then in templates, I have a very simple twig template uh, that just wraps my read time variable in a div um, and adds a label to that. So it's a very, very simple custom module it does exactly what I needed to do and, and nothing else. Um, for the Drupal 9 website, um, I actually went back. So the first time I looked at the contributed modules for this, um, I tried one. I forget if I tried read time or node read time, but um, doing it, Activating the module on the website at that time caused the infamous white screen of death. Um, and so I abandoned trying a contributed module at that time um, and went on to try and the theme customization and then ultimately to uh, build the custom module. Uh, for the Drupal 9 website, I actually went back to the node read time module and gave it another try because it had been updated uh, very recently. Um, I, I deployed that site this summer. So the node read time module had been updated right around the time I was, I was trying to do this. And, um, and it worked great. Um, one of the nice things about the node read time module um, is I believe it, I have to, ch uh, yes. Um, it has views integration which is really key. So the field can be available for, um, for adding to views, um, which is really helpful um, if you wanna do that. Um, I don't necessarily need it for what I was doing, but um, it's, a, it's a nice to have if I wanna do something like that further down the line. Uh, 
so that's all I have for today. And um, this is the first time I am giving this presentation. So it'd be really cool if uh, anybody has any comments or any questions, uh, ways I might uh, improve or expand upon this topic. That would be great. Is the code um, online somewhere so we can refer to it at some point? Um, it isn't right now, no. Um, it's just uh, part of the part of the uh, the Git project for the for the library's website. Right. No, I just want because yeah, some of the um, the hooks were aren't ones that I've used yet. So, um, so the I can share the links, or if it's useful, uh, David, I don't know if this is possible. I can. I have links in my slides for those hooks. Um, so yeah. I could share the It was such a simple link. module, which I liked. That was like, you could, you did something like with not a lot of code. So Drupal modules can get a little too complicated sometimes, but this was good. Yeah, it definitely can happen. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I, I can share the links for those, for the documentation for those particular hooks. Yeah, I actually appreciate seeing examples of simple modules because the complicated module had just so many things wired together that it's hard to understand the, the, the actual understand the code. So out of curiosity, the way you've implemented it, if you look at a view and you've got the fields on the on a, in the node, you can't see the, the field that you've added. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand what, what you mean. If I'm looking at a view. Uh, I was just thinking, the, you mentioned that the contributor module has got views integration. And I just yes. assume that if you add a field, and it must be a field on the node, it must be available to the views module. Um, no. Um, and I think the reason for that is how the pseudo field being inserted. So. Um, it's being, uh, when it's being, let me go back to, actually, do you mind if I share the screen again? That might help. Oh, please, go for it. Uh, okay. Actually, I just realized something. If you're not saving the value in the database, maybe that's why views cannot handle it. That may be one thing. Um, the other is where it's being uh, assigned. So what I'm doing here in this function is specifically defining that pseudo field for teasers. Um, and um, the other thing is um, I'm using uh, I'm using hook entity type view to insert this pseudo field into the render array for the node. So the 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 field the value is only being inserted when rendering the teaser for the node. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna I, you're not gonna get any views integration out of this. I, I I'm I, it'd actually be very instructive to look at the uh, if I looked at the code for the node read time module and figured out what they were doing for that. But the only way that you could get that is if you were building a view that. Um, that used uh, rendered content instead of fields, and then you just rendered the uh, uh, rendered the teaser for that for those nodes, and then you'd still be able to see it. Cool. Thanks, that was helpful. Oh, do you mind sharing your slide deck on the meetup channel? Yeah, I can do that. I think um, I've never tried this before, but I, I I have to imagine that Keynote will allow me to export as PDF, and then I can just share the whole thing. Yeah. Sorry, I'm really going to interrupt, Lenora. Please. No, you, when you use the term pseudo field, so like I'm thinking, I think like I sometimes um, like with a hook, you know, I create a with the variable. I'm just trying to figure out like, cause I haven't heard that particular term before. And I'm thinking, have I, cause I've written a bunch of, 
custom modules. And I'm, did I do that? Or is that something specific that I'm missing? Like, I don't know where that term comes from. I didn't, I, that one I did not make up. I right. got that from the, the source material that I originally started looking at when I was investigating how I might do this. Uh, and so that's I what they were calling it. I search for pseudo field and, and see what I can find because that in general yeah. sounds like a really useful tool. You know, yeah, I've actually, done similar in the, yeah, in the, um, in the documentation for the, uh, which hook is that? Um, in the documentation for hook entity extra field info, um, it specifically mentions pseudo fields. So, um, that term is in the Drupal documentation. But yeah, I guess they're just referring to it as a, it's basically a way to refer to a field where the, the value is generated rather than, than a value stored in a database. Well, and how long did it take? Did you have some big challenges when, when building this module? How long did it um, take? No, it actually didn't take me very long. Um, this, the, I, I mostly followed the, the, the sources that I have, the, that I you know, had the links for them in the, in the one slide. Um, they were, that, that was like really good starting points for, for putting this together. So it was actually pretty easy. Um, I, I think the biggest hurdle was the conceptual one. I, I, I had also never heard of pseudo fields before. Um, and so I hadn't even realized that such a thing was an option. Um, and so I was lucky enough to, to stumble across um, this concept in you know, searching for possible solutions. Um, and it turned out to be relatively easy to implement. Uh, I mean, obviously by the code, it's, it's not that much code. Thanks, Aaron. Any other questions? Cool. So thank you very much, Aaron. Yeah, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was helpful. It's. I'm always encouraged seeing more people creating modules. I only create a module about once a year, so it's always a uh, a struggle having relearned things that I, I really should know. Uh, and sometimes doing very simple things takes takes me a bit of a bit of time. So uh, thank you for that presentation. Now we have a chance just to ask each other, um, share what challenges you, do you have at the moment. Um, maybe we can help each other. And I might start by just sharing something that was very helpful for me. Um, I will share my screen. So I had um, this page where I'm drilling down to find categories. So um, th this page is in Spanish. So this page works by, I have a category, I click on a category, and then I have a list of subcategories, and I click on a subcategory, and then I have a list of um, documents under that subcategory. And I didn't know how to do that in Drupal. So I had embedded a React app in this Drupal application to do this. And uh, I think it was three months ago that I asked, asked, how do I do this in Drupal? And someone explained to me contextual filters and something I, uh, that was actually very easy to, to implement. And this feature now, it's, it's made the, the website much simpler to maintain, especially as I hand it over to, to others. And surprisingly, it's actually faster than it was in React. And you could, if you're interested in how that's possible, you, I can tell you after. But that's just one example where I asked a question in, uh, in this forum and there were others who were able to, to help out. So what challenges do you, do you have? Maybe we can, maybe we have, some ideas, maybe we don't. But um, 
So maybe I'll ask Hussein, what are some of the challenges you have at the moment? Well, I was uh, thinking about it and, um, uh, you know, day to day, I don't really develop Drupal sites anymore, but there are a couple of uh, volunteer sites that I'm maintaining. And uh, one of them is stuck on Drupal 9 upgrade. And I was wondering if anyone has dealt with uh, video, video module. And uh, uh, there is an alpha release for Drupal 9 support, but it seems like they're changing the strategy. So I, I was wondering if anyone has had, uh, have, have they used video module and have thoughts about how it's going to be migrated to Drupal 9? I know it's a very, very specific niche, but you know, yeah. That's about the only thing I can think of right now. This is the place to ask. I, I, I haven't used a video module my, myself. Uh -huh. um, anyone else? So what, what's the, the challenge is that there is, is there a version nine of the video, video module? Yeah, technically there is. There is an alpha release, but then there is this thing that uh, in the roadmap they have written that, so, you know, video module is, a, quite an old module, you know, uh, Drupal six, seven times. And, uh, you know, before media became mainstream. So I had built a Drupal six site on that and migrated to Drupal seven, eight, you know, with video, video module and it, it, it works well. Uh, now I think the Drupal nine plan is that they would fall back on media module to actually host the video and it will take care of, uh, transcoding and everything. So like video module, apart from giving a field type for video, it also sub it does things like uh, transcoding video on the server, generating thumbnails and that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So I think in Drupal 9, the plan is that they would move it to media and then they would just take care of transcoding and thumbnail generation. Things which I really don't need, you know, it's like theory. I mean, I can move to media. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, migration, I, I could write the migration, but again, like this is a volunteer thing, you know, it's not really, I don't really get time from my day job to really think about this. So it's been stuck and uh, like Drupal nine is what next month, sorry, Drupal eight end of uh, support is next month. Right. Uh, so I was wondering if there is something, somebody knows of like a quick fix to this, you know, like quick migration to video or sorry, media or like, you know, have you used the alpha module to see it's, I mean, like it's a good middle ground for now. I, I was just wondering. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't help with that. But I know it's a challenge with content if you've got a, a different way of, uh, if you use a module for content and try to move that into media, that, that, that is difficult. Yeah, I mean, migration is not a problem. It's just like a question of time, really. You know, at the time which I don't have at the moment. And I am sorry, you know, I'm not switching on the video. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a mess over here. And no, no problem. My, my baby is, you know, kind of, creating more mess as we speak. Uh, yeah. Cool, thanks for saying. Uh, what about you, Ralph? Any challenges? We make no promises that we can solve. Uh, just one quick comment uh, to Hussein. Um, it looks like that the move to Drupal 9 isn't completely done yet because there's an issue with need to convert for Drupal 9 still open. So, yeah, yeah, but there is a patch. Yeah, yeah I, a... I see that. I remember seeing that. And um, again, I was, I didn't really want to take that on. I thought, you know, I could just uh, move over to media, you know. Uh, I've been actually following that issue since many months now. I've, I've been okay. I've almost moved, moved almost all my other sites to Drupal 9. A couple of them are left. This one uh, is one of them. And I've been watching this module for months, you know, hoping that, okay, they release Drupal 9. I think this and one more module, they are the only reasons I'm still holding out. Uh, and, and video is an important, like content. You know, if it was some other functionality, maybe I could turn it off for a bit. But uh, like uh, David also said, you know, it's... Um, uh, content, I can't really, there's no real way, you know, I mean, unless I delete all the videos. Uh, okay. Uh, and the, I don't have really a thing I am struggling at the moment with, but just one other comment I've asked in the group.
group here a few months ago in one meetup. It was about a caching issue I ran into um, with the module I was using. And the, the problem was um, that module has several submodules. And as soon as you install a submodule, um, strange issues turn up. And turned out it was a caching issue. And the odd thing is, other modules, I've taken a look at the MetaTag module, uh, hasn't had that kind of issue, but is also heavily using um, submodules. But there was no sign of any caching um, cleaning done by the module. And that was odd. But I did a bit of research and, and it turned out and I'll paste it in the meetup channel later uh, because my computer is a bit slow when Zoom is running. Um, that there is an, I paste it for the moment in the Zoom chat and I paste it later in the Slack also. That way it's easier to tackle. Um, it's basically, the naming of uh, the plugin manager, you have to prefix it with plugin manager. It's in, in a change record and there it's only noted as a best practice, practice, but there is no indication what that implies. And as soon as you are using the prefix, Drupal is taking care of caching under the hood. This is a nice find. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I didn't have any ideas with with that. So even if you manually cleared the caches, it wouldn't solve the, the issue. Yeah, you have to manually. Either uh, I was able to solve the issue back then by manually clearing the cache, but. As soon as the module maintainer was using the prefix or another method, uh, Drupal was taking care of it. Okay. And that was just uh, for your information for the okay. group uh, um, in case anyone is um, using the services and the plugin manager there, that the naming is important. Sure, cool. And I don't know if you want to comment. One of the major blockers for many sites to move to Drupal 8 and 9 has been the rules module. Do you have any idea suggestions with, with that? Me? Yeah. Have you heard of? Yeah, I wrote you to <laughs> the ECA module about. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Uh... Again, I can paste it in. Oh, my computer is dying. I think that's that is big news. So while there's no migration of your Drupal seven rules, there is a module coming, or there is a module in Drupal eight. There's already a module existing. It's basically for uh, Drupal nine. Uh, it's built from the ground up, um, so it's no part of rules. And it's utilizing all existing functionality in Drupal 9 and Symfony. And basically the logic, a business logic is defined with uh, external tools like BPMN, IO or Camunda. And yeah. I've attended uh, the inaugural presentation in the German speaking Dach region meetup uh, with, a demonstra with a demo time also. And it was quite advanced for an early alpha. Sure. Early working and worth a look, I would say. Great. Thank you, Ralph. So holding Aaron or 
Leora, do you have a, a challenge that you'd like to share with the group? My only challenge is trying to finish the talk for next week or two weeks from now. <laughs> that, I'll, I'll figure that one out. Speaking of the talk, I feel like I'm doing homework while I'm in class right now. I'm setting all the events to push it out and promote to make sure that the, the ball keeps rolling for lunch and learn. <laughs> so what's the hardest part of your talk, Lara? Is it, uh, are you, this is the graphics? No, 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 no. Graphics, I'm an artist. That's, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually wanted the, I wanted to finish my own sites and I, I, all of September was like one long Jewish holiday. So I just haven't had time, but I got um, a site that I was working on for my friend to go live. So I have plenty of material for the talk. It's just kind of frustrating that I, there are other things that I want to work on. That's always life, right? You know, yeah. you can't do everything. So cool. um, yeah, just uh, all good things. We should have good things happening and not, uh, not problems, so. Mm -hmm. Clear. What are you? Uh, any challenges you're facing at the moment? Um, the only real puzzle that I am dealing with at the moment. I, obviously, I've got some of the same sort of issues. I uh, I have to thank you uh, for that uh, that link about the the ECA module. Um, I actually ran into this problem a few. Months ago, I was trying to use rules for uh, for something really simple. Uh, I wanted um, I wanted email notification when um, when uh, when new nodes were created, and um, I could not get rules to actually. I could get rules to work. The problem was uh, rules, like so many other modules, really messes up the uh, block configuration screens. I don't know if anybody's ever run into that problem, um, but every time you add uh, contributed modules, um, they start, if, if you then go into block configuration, there's all sorts of new tabs that get added, even when you don't need them to be added. It's a very strange problem and rules is the worst offender I've seen so far because all of a sudden there's like 20 new tabs in block configuration that haven't, that are that don't need to be there. They're, it's spillover from the way rules are written, um, and it's it's a known issue. It's just uh, not solved. So it's it's one of these where they're they're still arguing about where it needs to be solved. Um, so this this other module, this ECA, might be a really interesting one to look at. Um, but no, um, the the one the the one problem I'm having uh, is sort of a self inflicted. Uh, wound of sorts um, at uh, what was it a uh, few months back um, they provided new laptops for all the staff I uh, decided I would get uh, a new Mac um, it's a new Mac with an M1 chip and um, so none of the local development uh, tools work. <laughs> um, I, heard that about the I have for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I I've managed to get Docker to work. Uh, so they, they, there was an update, uh, this spring that finally like Docker was, it was reasonable to run, um, on an M1 Mac, but Lando, uh, is not cooperating with me. Um, and I'm a Pantheon customer and their local dev is, is Docker and possibly Lando based as well. And so that doesn't work either. So um, my ongoing struggle is trying to figure out a proper development environment uh, on my M1 Mac. Cause right now I, uh, right now I'm having a, a lot of fun. I, I use built-in Apache. I use the built-in PHP, which is going to be gone as soon as you update to the, the next version of Mac OS. Uh, and I use Docker to run a MariaDB uh, database server for my local instances, and that's how I'm that's how I'm running my local development environments. But that's not um, that's not something I'd want to have somebody else reproduce. Sure. So. I see Ralph has got his hand up. Have you got an answer? Yeah. Uh, 
two comments about your first the first thing you've mentioned about your uh email notification or not create um mm -hmm. there's also a module also from the same um developer who created eca he created Dun dance dance it's called it's a notification uh, framework for drupal um in it's in combination with the push framework also by him um so basically dos creates a notification entity if something happens and then you can also define define which in which event a push notification is sent and that push for the notification could be for example an email or to a slack group or whatever Oh, it's really quite neat. flexible yeah oh, that, that's great thank you for that link i will definitely take a look at that and about your local development environment um you might take uh, a try with uh, ddev that is definitely working on m1 randy oh, the main great. developer um of ddev is developing on M m1 mac and M mac air so it's definitely working the only uh image or container which isn't available is my sql because they haven't an arm image but that's since you're using MariaDB, it isn't an issue at all so it's worth a try and since you're using mac a ddev has since version 1.8 which was released about one week ago i guess um mutagen integration which speeds up um the development uh, the, the performance on a mac trem tremendously okay you great. have to take in consideration it takes more disk space but that's the only downside huh oh thank you i will take a look at that yeah i know I had thought about DDEV originally when I was looking for a solution, but I know that they had been waiting for Docker uh, to be updated as well. So I guess now that Docker is working, they must have a working version. So that's great to hear. Yeah, I'm to next month was I'm planning to get a, an M1 Mac. So I've been following what apps are uh, available. Um, and I I believe Lantern now is 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 natively supported on on M1. Is that right? Or are there still issues with Lantern? It's supposed to be. Um, I've just had a lot of problems getting it to run. Um, and I, I I wish I knew enough about Docker to not have to use Lando, but I don't. So you know. Um, Lando has some nice uh, potential integrations with with uh, with Pantheon. In addition to having you know just the, the the basic Drupal recipes that you can use, which is always nice. One of the things I like about Lando is I can always go into their channel and, and they give responses. It's, they're, they're very helpful. You can see me in the RW. I'm always asking questions. How come this doesn't work? So, and, <laughs> and it wasn't. It turns out it wasn't their fault. Our, our site was way behind, and and the the senior developer that I work with actually had to do tons of things to get it to work. But they were very helpful with that. But I used DDev like two years ago. I think it it was pretty good. I mean, DDev is really really good, and well, Randy is one of a kind in regards of support he is online all the time and responding in usually oof, no time <laughs> cool. so thank you guys um let me put on the upcoming events and we can still chat some more uh, after that um, so anyone who has time can continue, but let me just show us the, the upcoming events. So we've had a, a time of problem solving. Let's also have a look. We've got our lunch and learn on October the 19th. And so that's um, at 12 noon and we go for exactly an hour. So 
Um, our evening meeting is a bit more relaxed and we can take more time if we would like to. And of course, we um, are always keen for new speakers. Thank you, Aaron, for being, being your first time. And we're looking forward also to Leora's talk. And uh, yeah, we can just, our official meeting is over, but feel free to hang around and chat. My next meeting is at, uh, at 6.30. Um, so I'm happy to, to stay and chat, but our official part of the meeting is, is done. So thank you guys, and I'll stop the recording now.